In just a few days, farmers in Brazil will begin planting their 2015-16 soybean crop. The date marks the latest chapter in what has become an epic story. Over the span of just a few decades, South America has developed into one of, if not the, most important producing regions in the world. Taken as a whole, South America produced 170 million metric tons of soybeans in 2014-15, up from just 154 in 2013-14 and 72 in 2000. But it's a vast, varied, and ever-evolving continent. Where exactly is the growth coming from? How much will its farmers continue to plant? What are the biggest factors involved? And what does this mean for the rest of the world? Let's take a closer look. When it comes to forecasting South American production these days, currency is key. Over the last year or so, Brazilians in particular have paid more attention to currency fluctuations than Chicago Board of Trade prices. The dollar super cycle, coupled with a struggling Brazilian real, means that the movement in basis and currency is offsetting global prices. As a result, despite the downturn in global corn and soybean prices, Brazilian producers have continued to cash in. This, perhaps above everything else, will determine how much Brazilians, and therefore South America as a whole, will decide to plant this coming season. While around a 4% increase in planted area is likely for Brazil, ag resource research models suggest that, given the currency imbalance, Brazil alone could see up to a 20% increase in harvested area. Brazilian farmers aren't being quiet about their intentions either. Of over 100 big producers surveyed this summer by ag resource and AGR Brazil, not one has said they plan to cut production this coming year. The models and surveys serve as a warning. Don't underestimate Brazilian farmers. While without a doubt the biggest player, Brazil is not the only regional power to pay attention to. So, how will it pan out country by country? Let's take a closer look at the big three South American producers. Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. Besides being the biggest agricultural powerhouse in the region, Brazil is also South America's largest and richest country. Recently, there has been a notable shift from corn to soybeans as farmers seek higher profits. But thanks to Brazil's climate and its safrina corn crop, they are still expected to export 25 million metric tons of the grain. Paying close attention to currency, Expect up to 55 million metric tons of soybean exports in 2015-16, up nearly 5 million metric tons from last year. Paraguay is South America's third most important agricultural economy. With farming mostly centered along the Brazilian border and in the eastern part of the country, it has significantly expanded its corn and soybean exports over the last few decades. Soybeans represent, by far, the country's biggest and most important export. However, a large majority of soybean farmers are actually Brazilians, who have crossed the border in search of cheaper land and lax regulations. Corn and soybean expansion continues in Paraguay as well, with steady to slight increases going forward. Lastly, let's focus in on Argentina. In 1990, Argentinians planted only 4.8 million hectares of soy. Today, there are over 20 million hectares. The Argentinian economy and its currency have been one of the world's most volatile in recent years. As such, it is said that soybeans have become the most reliable currency they have, even referring to the oil seed as green gold. 
Given the implied volatility, strict government controls on export licenses, and a steep export tax, the situation in Argentina is different than in Brazil and Paraguay. Here, policy changes will have the biggest impact on production and export numbers going forward. Embattled President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner's term is up in just a few months. Regardless of the election results, it appears the Argentinian economy will begin liberalization efforts, likely leading to currency stabilization, renewed financial interest in the country, and, importantly, new agricultural policies. While paying close attention to policy changes, look for the country to continue increasing production and exports in soybeans, while slightly lowering its corn numbers. If there is little to suggest South American farmers will cut back heading into 2016, could weather play a role in reducing production numbers? Thanks to El Nino, likely not. Ag resource research suggests a notable correlation between high corn and soybean yields and El Nino years. Final South American soybean yield tallied below trend only twice during years when El Nino was present. During these years, the odds of above trend yield rises to 90%. And the same story rings true for corn. El Nino winters have triggered above trend South American corn yields in 7 of 10 years since 1975. El Nino conditions in 2010 triggered a yield which at the time exceeded the prior record by 14%. All said, expect South America to produce around 166 and export around 69 million metric tons of soybeans in 2015-16. As for corn, look for slightly lower production and export numbers. 111 and 43 million metric tons, respectively. But, with the world already awash in record stocks of corn and soybeans, plus diminishing demand from traditional sources like China and the biofuels industry, ever-increasing numbers out of South America present a problem. Exactly when these farmers will begin to slow their growth is impossible to know but it very well might be years before this story of unprecedented agricultural expansion comes to an end.